to another episode of the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. My name is Bradley Hamner, your host. On today's episode, we have Robert Bobby Harrington. He's the founder of Rubicon Course of Action, which specializes in performance coaching programs and immersive leadership development events. In his book, Lead You, The Winning Combination to Achieve Personal and Professional Success, Bobby shows you how self-leadership can transform you into the leader you aspire to be. Now, I love that message because in my own program, I talk about the very first principle is to lead yourself first. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Bobby Harrington. So the big question is this, how do small business owners like us grow our leadership, develop our teams and scale our business in a way that allows us to get our products and services out to the world yet still remain profitable? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Bradley Hamner and this is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Welcome to The Bottom Line, a new weekly podcast series that we drop every Thursday to complement our weekly Monday podcast interviews with the industry leaders. These podcasts are going to be designed to give you short, impactful, and value-driven information that you can start using right away in your business. I value your time and attention and will do my very best not to waste it. Just get what you need and go. So with that, let's get into today's episode. Are you an agency owner looking to grow your revenue, increase your bottom line, and better manage your taxes? Club Capital is here to help. Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agents in the country, providing monthly accounting, tax strategy, and CFO services. Way more than bookkeeping and your everyday run-of-the-mill tax prep, Club Capital is focused on providing financial and tax advisory services that help you plan and forecast your agency's performance. Their financial dashboards and agency forecasting tools help you better understand your agency's historical performance, create and measure future targets, and see how your agency compares to your peers around the country. Imagine what it would be like to understand the impact to your bottom line when deciding to hire a new employee or forecast the impact rate changes or commission rates will have on your business. With over $200 million in tracked annual revenue and $140 million in tracked annual expenses, Club Capital has the data and the team to help you make better informed decisions for your agency. They will help you turn that back office stress into the backbone of your agency's success by giving you the tools to take your agency and your leadership to the next level. Visit club.capital today to book a solution overview with one of our business consultants. Club Capital, way more than a CPA firm. Bobby Harrington, welcome to the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Glad to be here, Bradley. Thanks for the invite. Well, before we hit record, we started going down the path of how much we both love leadership. My goodness, the name of this podcast is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast after all. So we're going to end up having a deep dive here into all things leadership. But before we get into any of that, we always start with background and origin story. So tell us your background. How did you get to where you are today and what led you to here? Yeah, no, awesome question. So, you know, not unlike a, a lot of folks who are, are from the South, I, I play football, right? And that was my first, uh, my first introduction to structured leadership, right? And I noticed very quickly that, you know, the coaches, they each had different ways they approach things. And at at that time, you know, at seven years old, I didn't know what leadership was. I just knew that, you know, this coach was this way and the other coach was, you know, doing that thing. And, uh, you know, it had to do with a lot of things, the way they approach things, the the tonality they use, and, uh, you know, actually how they delegated and and stuff like that. Mm. So, you know, after having a, you know, a good run through high school and, and some little time in college, I uh, I joined the Marine Corps, but before I got to the Marine Corps, you know, my father was a uh, World War II, Korea and Vietnam veteran, uh, three times in Vietnam. So, you know, he was he was an awesome leader of our family, and you know, and a leader in the military and leader in the community as well. You know, so I I learned a lot from him. He's sort of a quiet person, but uh, you know, you can learn a lot from quiet people too. Mm-hmm. My, my mom, on the other hand, was, uh, her family's from East Europe, from Yugoslavia. You know, she's 100% Serbian. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, those are really tough people, you mm-hmm. know, so she was kind of the opposite, you know, of my dad. You know, she was uh, had a little bit more fire, you know, with her. So, 
I kind of learned, you know, both ways. So between my dad and my mom, you know, I was, I was positioned well to go into the Marine Corps. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, playing football in South Louisiana two days is really hot. So, you know, going to boot camp in San Diego was, was not a problem. Uh, It was more of a, you know, mental adjustment, Mm -hmm. but uh, how I got here, you know, in the Marine Corps, they teach leadership traits and principles, right. Which goes to character building, you know, and how to lead yourself in teams. And uh, after spending four years in in, uh, the Marine Corps, you know, those things stuck with me. And I write about, you know, that in the book. But I've carried those things, you know, through life. And, you know, I went from the Marine Corps to oil and gas, which is, you know, similar to the military. They're large companies with projects and missions and, and stuff like that. And, you know, quickly was able to differentiate myself, you know, based on my experience in the Marine Corps leading myself and others. Right. So, you know, I had a a short uh, stint as a contractor and then finally hired with Chevron and uh, spent about 18 years in in that uh, global 100 company. You know, so a lot of uh, a lot of rich experience, you know, in operations and at the work face. And uh, it's always been a privilege, you know, to, to lead others and. You know, now I'm taking my 34 years of experience and and trying to give that back to others. First of all, thank you for yours and your family's service um, to our country. Oh, you're welcome. You know, my my pleasure. How do you define leadership? Leadership is action, right? There's a big difference between leadership and management. You know, Management at its core is, you know, if you look at the definition, it's to direct and control, and that's fine. But leadership is action, and leadership is having a line of sight. You Mm. know, a lot of folks use the word vision. Uh, I tend to think that word is just a little bit overused. I I like to say line of sight because that that tells me where, you know, tells me I'm looking forward. You know, vision tells me, you know, something else. It it could be this or it could be that, but... Mm. A line of sight. So a leader is always going to be a person of action. He's going to promote action, and he's going to let the team know where they're going. He's going to clearly articulate the mission. Mm. You know, I've had people that have um, talked to me over the years mm-hmm. about starting a business. I'm a self-professed business geek, and including all things leadership. Leadership is one of the hardest things that you can do in in life. Um, why do you why do you love it so much? Well, you know, I've always been a person who wants to wake up and achieve, mm-hmm. and I I quickly learned, and we talked about this before we press the record button. You know, I I learned that leadership was always the problem, but yet it was always a solution. So if I worked real hard at at trying to be a good leader, you know, then I could help solve problems and have a greater impact. Mm. But I I wake up each day, you know, asking myself, you know, a series of questions, you know, about leadership. And, you know, I really, you know, commit to that. What are some of those questions that you ask yourself? Yeah, sure. You know. Am I willing to do the hard work it takes? You know, am I willing to put in the repetitions to become a better leader, right? Am I going to put others before myself, right? Going back to being unselfish, because you know, what I found is to be a good leader, you really have to be unselfish and you really have to put people first. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's an old adage in the military, you know, is it the mission or or the welfare of the troops? And you know, in, in the military, it's always a mission, but you don't get that mission without taking care of the troops, right? Mm-hmm. Taking care of their welfare, training them well. So, you know, usually there are some, you know, ultimate prize at, at the end of a conflict or a war. So, you know, it, you know, if you have to expend human life, you know, that's, that's just the cost. But like in business, you know, it's just a little bit different, you know. You always have to put people first or you, you will not, people, the A players will not stay at your company, you know, especially this day and age when when folks have a lot of choice. Yeah, you know, yeah. you can sell online, become a solo entrepreneur, you know, just many different things. 
Hmm. And another one of the questions is, you know, are you willing to deliver feedback, you know, in, in such a way and tone that tells the person you're giving the feedback to, you know, I'm giving you this feedback to improve you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't preclude, you know, having some direct conversations, you know, you know, that happens in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, fourth question is, you know, we're never done. You know, am I willing to know that I'm never done? Mm. You know, uh, leadership is like a, uh, it's like growing a garden. You know, you prepare the soil, you plant the seed, you water, you know, you pull weeds and uh, you don't get the fruit until the very end. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, as a leader, we're just, we're never done. And, and to your point, on the best day, it's hard. Yeah. You know, uh, I showed you before we got started my, my model and the very first principle is lead yourself first. So help myself and the listeners. I mean, I know I, I have an idea of how this, how I feel about this, but it, it's not about my opinion. It's about yours. You talked about as an example, can I put others before myself? I mean, it it, it is servant leadership. It's being selfless. Mm -hmm. Yet you wrote the book called lead you. Mm -hmm. And it's all about self leadership first. And so can you help help us we're kind of reconcile those two things to understand, wait a minute, we're talking about leading others, putting others before ourselves. But then here it is talking about the self leadership and then and, 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 and like, how do I reconcile those two things? No, that's, that's a great question. You know, so before we lead others, we have to lead ourselves. You know, so if, you know, if we expect others to have empathy and compassion and have leadership attributes and, and live their core values, we have to do that first. You know, we really have to do that because as a leader, people are looking up to you to learn, right? They're, they're going to emulate what you do. So, you know, they want to see your strength of character, you know, they want to know you have integrity. They want to know they can trust you, you know, and trust is one part character and one part competence, you know. So that's how that's how I would sort of reconcile self-leadership and, and leading others and, and putting others before yourself. But, you know, you have to take care of yourself as well. You know, mm -hmm. one of the chapters in the book is, is on self-care. And, you know, as men... You know, and, and maybe, you know, women alike, you know, sometimes folks don't don't apply that self-care. You know, I, I struggled with it till I was, you know, 45, you know, burned out a couple of times and, you know, worked 80, 90 hour weeks and, you know, this, that and the other. Mm -hmm. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that takes its toll and, you know, self-care is important. You know, it's like putting your your mask on first on the airplane, you know, before you put someone else's on. You've got to take care of yourself. You know, so you can be your best for them. Mm -hmm. You know, that that works in all phases, right? At home, at work, you know, to a larger extent to the community. Mm -hmm. What what have been some of the things on this podcast every week? I try to bring things from I kind of go back and forth. I try to bring things from kind of a high level like theory, right? The, the, the principles even all the way down to some practical things. And there's a lot of books out there, not just leadership books, but business books in particular mm. that I read them. And I think, yeah, it's good. It's, it's good stuff. I've heard this before, but it doesn't really help me day to day doesn't help me in the trenches with this situation in order to how do I deal in this moment with this with this you know difficult performance issue right with it with it with with the team member as an example right and yet I'm wanting to have compassion and understanding and patience and all these things and at the same time 
I feel like I'm about to inflict pain, you know, uh, because, because like they're going to be reprimanded because like they dropped the ball or whatever that may be, you know, I mean, there's a million different ways I could go in that. I think you get the essence of my question. Right. And so what are some things like down to the practical level that you believe in and that you've learned along the way and you share with your clients that you think are kind of core to what it become means to become a good leader? Yeah, sure. So, you know, again, it all starts with self-trust and self-belief and, you know, we'll build from there. So self-trust is doing the things that I say I'm going to do that are important to me day in and day out and doing those without fail. So let's just think about it. Do you believe in someone before you can trust them? Mm. Not really. You won't do that. The only the only exception to that might be in in the public domain where people in businesses have built you know some track record you know so you trust them but still you know my experience tells me people want some repetitions you know because trust is built through you know repetition right and transaction mm-hmm. so once I trust myself I can start to believe in myself you know and to believe in myself. You know, it builds on trust where, you know, I've done these certain things. I've achieved something, right? And that's what allows me to go after a bigger and a bigger and a bigger goal. Or, you know, serve as a team leader or serve as a supervisor, then serve as a superintendent. And maybe someday, maybe a CEO, maybe the CEO of your own company. Mm -hmm. But you have to start with self-trust and self-belief, okay? And Mm -hmm. then when... And to do that, to do that, you have to be very adept at character attributes or leadership attributes, rather. And we cover that in chapter two and three. You know, such as justice, uh, judgment, you know, courage, knowledge, enthusiasm, right? Those are all traits that are very important to a person and to a leader. Mm. And building on that, and this is this is one I'm very adamant about is you have to select four to five core values depending on where you're at in your life and you have to live those right so when you're young you know it might be ambition it might be uh exploration you know uh month financial might be a core value Mm -hmm. Uh, later on in life you know when you're staring at retirement it might be financial stability you know security Mm -hmm. um you know my core values are you know, hard work, family, simplicity, respect yourself and others and believe in yourself, you Mm. know, at at my point in life. And, you know, I try each and every day to live those the best I can. And when folks pick their core values based on what's important to them, well, then they stand out from others. Mm -hmm. So living your values coupled with, you know, building your strength of character is what I found to be most important. And that's what gives us a unique, quote unquote, leadership character. Ambition is the first step towards success. It's time to level up your agency. And Coach P Consulting will help you do just that by using the same strategies he used to sell over 700 life insurance policies in 2021 alone. Now, this is not your regular one and done type coaching. You'll get personalized coaching two days a week, every week of the month, and you'll get a live look behind the scenes of his team training and an office that's performing at the highest level. There's a reason Coach P Consulting is the fastest growing coaching company for insurance agency owners in the country. Coach P will train your team alongside his own and show you the exact steps they're taking to achieve Chairman Circle, Exotic Travel, and Multi-Line Presence Club, and be one of the few agents to be selected to have a third office. So whether your goal is to be at the top of your local market or amongst the best in the country, this training will give you the strategies and the tactics to get there. For just $250 a month, you'll get high-level coaching each week from someone who is already getting it done at that level, and his strategies work, and it's time to put them to work for you. Sign up at coachpconsulting.com and get your first full month for free when you mention the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Day in and day out, I would say the majority of the time... I think for myself, and and I try to think about this for our listeners, that I do believe in myself, right? I, I do. I don't. Um, but boy, I have days. I have days. I have weeks. I can have long stretches. I really doubt myself. I get in my head. 
about it and I can find every way to um, start to doubt, you know, and, and start to, I, I find almost evidence of my, I'm not good enough type thing. Right. Um, and so that becomes hard to kind of get out of that, out of that cycle. I mean, you always do, right. You try not to be in those low points. And so, you know, I mean, unless you're a narcissist, you know, and, and, and you know, you're just delusional thinking that you got the, the world by the tail. I mean, you know, obviously we all have days where days and periods of time where we're like, man, I don't know if I'm cut out for this, you know, um, how do you handle that? Yeah, no, that's an excellent question. Again, on, on the best day, leadership is hard. You know, I find out, I find when I'm in a slump or I'm having a little bit of uh, self-belief challenges, you know, again, action is the word, you know, I'll get in the gym. I'll just try to clear my mind because also what I found out is we tend to make up our own problems sometimes. Sometimes a, a molehill become, <laughs> becomes a mountain, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that's the thought side of it. But, you know, there are instances in the course of a career where we have setbacks. You know, I've had setbacks. You know, I worked 15 or 16 years in, in my last company to get this one opportunity. I got that opportunity and, uh, you know, I had a setback. You know, and, uh, you know, that was hard to deal with. But, you know, based on my life and the setbacks I had had before, you know, I didn't crawl into a hole. Mm -hmm. I knew to dust myself off and keep going. You know, so I would say take action and, and keep going when you get in those bouts of, of self-belief. You, know, you just try to purge, you know, whatever is in your head, just get it out, you know, and a hard workout will do that or a hike will do that, you know. Or a good, good, tough conversation, you know, will do it as well. You know, uh, when you said sometimes we make up on our own problems, I wish I could give credit to the per first person that had shared this with me. But they said, uh, you know, as business owners, we're really good firefighters and we can put out fires left and right. But boy, we're way better arsonists. And I thought, man, that's good. That's so good self-sabotage self-sabotage that's right yeah 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 no doubt i i think i think back at times and, and kind of along that lines I, I heard this just last week or week and a half ago i was at a, a mastermind group that i'm i'm a part of and the person made a comment around sideways energy and i was like man i've never heard that before but i thought how many times have i I should do a podcast on this myself, but sideways energy where I'm doing something that's just making the business go sideways. Like we're not moving forward. If anything, we're probably moving backwards, but all of the energy is an effort to move forward. But because I have not, I'm not thinking clearly, I'm just doing stuff. I'm just doing stuff. I'm just in motion. But what I'm actually doing is not moving the business forward. It's not leading the team at a high level. I'm not leading the, you know, like I'm doing all of these things, but it's just sideways energy. And mm -hmm. I think that is similar to me. I'm just starting fires. I'm just starting fires just to come back around the backside and put them out. Like fire, put it out. And then, you know, you're constantly like, what are you doing? You're just moving sideways. Does that make sense? Oh, no, for sure. You know, and I, I think... <laughs> What that is, is a little bit of overthinking and getting away from prioritization. Mm -hmm. You know, look, we can only do one to three things good in the course of the day. You know, the last job, uh, last assignment I had, uh, you, know, had a, you know, about 120 people, had five team leaders. It was an oil and gas facility, people going offshore. Not only had to, you know, lead that organization, had to deal with a set of executives over here. And then, you know, 5,000 miles away, there's a group of subject matter experts that had some purview of what we were doing. So, you know, on a given day, there was 30 to 40, you know, things that you really had to do. But I would focus on one, you know, the last couple of years, I would focus on one to three things. And if something else was important, someone was going to make a phone call or, you know, they're going to scream. Mm. And it worked beautifully, right? Mm. Because the thing is, 
if everything is critical, then nothing's critical, right? Mm -hmm. We really have to, you know, do some analyzing and, and determine, you know, what, what are the top three priorities? And we need to work those, you know, really hard. But, you know, to your point, I, I've had times, you know, even on that assignment where I, I sat for an hour and wondered which way I should go. Mm. You know, <laughs> there were just so, so many people wanted so many things. But but again, it came back to making a choice, prioritization. And you know what? Every day, everyone's not going to be happy. Yeah. And that's just how it is, you know. So, you know, I, I learned you know, through trial and error, not to people please, you know, never really been a people pleaser, but, you know, I think the good in us, you know, wants to deliver for everyone, but on a given day, that that's always not going to happen. That's mm -hmm. just the facts, you know, yeah. if you're doing a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of your favorite leadership stories that have shaped kind of not, not just the story them itself, but how it shaped how you believe and what you think about leadership today. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just go with this one, you know, part of the, when I was 45, you know, I had a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of success, right. Um, at my job and I was, I developed uh, technology for about eight years and received a chairman's award and, you know, that was cool. Got to go see the CEO and, and this, that, and the other. And so a special recognition. And, you know, my next assignment was in Escravos, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, pretty, pretty tough place, pretty austere. And, you know, I didn't realize, but, I, you know, when I arrived there, I was burned out. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some things started to manifest. And, you know, so some things weren't going right. And by all accounts, you know, uh, had a good job you know financially it was okay and but you know it, it forced me to really you know it was really a low point you know like rock rock bottom so it forced me to you know look within and I tried and I started trying to solve you know what you know what was the problem here and uh I'd never been a real big reader of books because I don't like people to think for me you know I enjoy different perspectives but I don't like reading any kind of dribble hmm. But I got an iPad and, you know, one of the books I got was, uh, was Lone Survivor, you know, mm -hmm. by Marshall Luttrell, which uh, kind of outlines the operation of Red Wing, right, uh, in Afghanistan. And, you know, I guess I'll boil it all down to if, you know, if the man's team was killed, three other people were killed, and he fell down the mountain three or four times and he kept fighting, you know, he, he never quit. And uh, he didn't quit because, you know, it was in his DNA or his train that, you know, I'm going to give effort until I drop, right? You know, so I, I examined myself and, you know, I think that was one of the most powerful lessons, you know, for me. And, you know, out of that experience came my want to give my perspective, you know, on leadership. So, you know, that's kind of why I wrote the book, Lead You, mm -hmm. right? Mm. give folks a, a template and a roadmap what other books podcast or other things did you, have you tapped into that you feel like in addition to your book obviously have really kind of shaped your belief patterns yeah i think uh stephen covey you know the speed of trust you know well, that's a good book that's one of his not as not as uh well-known books but that's a good one Oh, no. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I didn't, there's no drivel in that one. I've listened to it on audio and read it. You know, it's a, just such an excellent book for people, you know, because a lot of times we need to be smart with our trust, right? We need to understand what trust is and, you know, be smart with it and protect, you know, protect trust. You know, that was one of the other questions that, you know, I answer each day when I wake up, you know, am I willing to protect trust, you know, with, with my family and my coworkers or any organization I'm with, you know, as a leader, you know, that's very important, you know, because it's, it's very difficult, you know, to build up trust because people trust you, either you're competent at something or you have really good strength of character or sometimes both, 
Mm-hmm. You know, but you can lose, you can lose or break trust, you know, really quick. And, uh, you know, I've had some hard lessons with that and uh, learned that really, you know, that's something we need to uh, protect. Aside from Stephen Covey, um, I think uh, discipline equals freedom or uh, extreme ownership. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a couple of good books by uh, Jocko Willink and, and Leif Babin. You know, I really like those a lot. Very practical. Mm-hmm. You know, again, as you mentioned, there's a lot of books out there that are sort of th- theoretical and, and high-minded and they sound good, but you when you walk away, you know, you ask yourself, okay, you know, what can I use here? And, uh, you know, usually, it's, you know, it's not much. You know? So yeah. I, I try to model my book where, you know, I give definitions, I give antidotes, you know, and I have exercises at the end of the chapters and also a call to action. Mm. You know, so we're giving folks something to uh, to immediately use, giving folks tools. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. I said that earlier, but there's a lot of books that, you know, are just kind of filled with a lot of fluff and there's not as many of them that kind of get down into, you know, I can actually uh, uh, take something away with this. So thank you for writing a book that ultimately is designed for transformation, not not just transformation of information, right? That actually means sure. that they can take it and read into it. Uh, Bobby, if people want to reach out to you and connect with you. Can Talk about the program that you have, uh, your leadership development program. Uh, what is that? How can people learn more about that if they want to connect with you? Yeah, awesome. So our program is is called the Stronger You Coaching Program, and it's it's leadership based. It's all about leading yourself, leading others, and learning how to lead through change. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have live immersive events. Uh, our first event is going to be June 26th through 30th. Uh, we'll be making that announcement very soon. It's going to be at the Wyo Ranch in uh, Kerrville, Texas. Mm-hmm. So that that's something you really don't want to miss. It's a four day immersive event. Uh, it's a chance again, you know, to learn about leadership, skills development, and, and adventure. You know, we we work hard, but you know, we play hard as well. Yeah, I love that. Who said that business business can't have a little bit of fun, right? Oh no, I mean, you know, I mean, even in the hardest times in the Marine Corps, we always had fun. You know, yeah. and I, I've carried uh, you know fun and camaraderie with me throughout my whole career and, and, you know, it's really worked well. Uh, Bobby, congrats on the book. Where can people pick up a copy? Sure. You know, we would like to route people to the website, uh, to www.therubiconcoa.com and they can go to my author page. And from there, it'll uh, ask him for a little bit of information and then we'll route them on to, to Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Bobby, enjoyed chatting with you about all things leadership and I hope to have you back on in the future when you write your next one. Well, I definitely enjoyed it and I, I much appreciate it, Bradley. Thank you. You know, I really enjoyed that conversation with Bobby. A couple of things stood out to me. I know many of you have heard or have read the book Extreme Ownership from Jocko Willenick. And I think that this book and the conversation with Bobby kind of reminded me of that. It's basically, you know, the personal responsibility for a situation. At the time that I'm recording uh, this outro, we just had as a team, uh, a thing that we were working through as an opportunity within the podcast. And over the past week, I really needed to try to take an opportunity to self-reflect and see how I could, you know, take extreme ownership or really just personal responsibility uh, for kind of where things were not where they needed to be. And uh, ultimately to be able to share, okay, this is not exactly what we are uh, capable of being able to do. I think we can do do better, but also try to just do some reflection myself. Um, I think that there's a balance of being able to do that, take personal responsibility, um, but at the same time, not beating myself up too much for maybe things not going exactly the way that I think that they should. So I really enjoyed that conversation with Bobby. I hope you did as well. Hey, thanks to our podcast sponsors, Autopilot Recruiting, Coach P Consulting, and Club Capital. If you want to be able to bring A players on your team, reach out to Autopilot Recruiting. Go to autopilotrecruiting.com and let Alex and the team know that you heard about them on the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. 
I personally use autopilot recruiting for all of my recruiting efforts and you should too. Their onboarding experience is second to none. I told the team, I said, hey, listen, I want to go through it just like someone else would. Just because I happen to know the people in the team, don't give me any special treatment. It has been exceptional end-to-end first-class experience with the emails to be able to onboard you and let you know exactly what to expect, the regular communication, just knowing that that's going to be taken care of for my business is incredibly important. Go to autopilotrecruiting.com. You've heard me say often and with good reason that some of the best money, I think the best money um, that I've ever invested in is to be able to buy back my time. And one of the ways to be able to buy back my time is to be able to find, be in the rooms and at the tables with people who are doing things at a higher level. Well, you will get exactly that Whenever you join Coach P, go to coachpconsulting.com. David and his team, they really do an incredible job of being able to share with you the behind the scenes of exactly what's working and what's not working in their business to help shortcut your success. At the end of the day, you're paying down some amount of debt, whether that's financial debt or even ignorance debt. The amount of money it's costing you to not own a million dollar business, as an example, is costing you a million dollars. And there's ways, there's skills that you can acquire. And the best way to do that is to be able to pay to be in the room, whether that's even a Zoom room or just to be able to pay access to someone like David who's getting it done at a high level. Go to coachpconsulting.com. I talk to business owners every day. And one of the ones... One of the topics that comes up often that stresses people out is financials. And I understand I was that way before. I've shared many times my own struggle of not being able to read financial statements, even though I had a degree in finance from Auburn University. No comments from the Alabama people. But I really didn't know how to read basic business financials. And it really hurt me in the early years of my business. No more with Club Capital. Go to club.capital, book a no obligation demo. Audrey one. Till next episode, lead well.